Yeah, so this is probably the most over-the-top raid animations I've ever created. If you've ever watched my Twitch streams, you might have seen it before. I have a bunch of these little animations that play whenever I get subs or donations that have my viewers' profile pictures in them, and the profile picture moves along with the video. I call these ones banimations because they automatically run whenever I ban someone in chat. And I get a lot of questions asking how I do these animations. Ain't no fucking way I'm gonna be able to explain it in one video, are you crazy? So. That's why I started the OBS Move Plugin Masterclass. This is part two of the series. If you missed the first video, I've already showed you how to install the plugin and create these simple scene transitions where your sources morph between scenes. It looks really cool, but I wanna go a little bit deeper. So today I wanna to show you how to slide sources around the screen like your webcam, images, videos, and move them from position to position so that you can make your own animations of your own. I'll be putting all these videos into a playlist, by the way, so check the link down below for for that and also sub so you don't miss any more videos in this series i so i gotta tell you to do that because i'm a youtuber and that's just what we do big shout out to this week's sponsor vip sd keys if you guys have been looking for a windows 11 license stop paying full price you can get a windows 11 pro license for as little as 21 dollars. just use my code nutty at checkout to get it 30 percent off and if you hate windows 11 you can get windows 10 keys for 15 dollars, and those keys can be upgraded to windows 11 for free so you can save a little bit more money you can use a secure payment method like paypal don't worry you're not going to get scammed i've used it all the time then they'll send you an activation code. You put that into your Windows settings and you're good to go. No more cringe watermark. Check out VIP SED keys in the link down below and save yourself some money instead of giving it to greedy corporate Microsoft. Before we progress to the really advanced stuff, let's start really, really basic. So say we've got a scene here that has our webcam and we wanna smoothly move our webcam into different positions on the screen. The fundamental piece of every single animation you do in OBS are these things called move source filters. Let me show you what I mean. So if you right click the scene that you wanna work on and go into filters, I've added a few example move source filters so you can see how they work. And you'll notice that whenever I toggle one of these move source filters on, it snaps the webcam into predefined positions on the screen. So if you wanna do any sort of movement, you just have to add a new move source filter to this filters menu. Keep in mind, you wanna add the filter to the scene and not the source. I know it's tempting to right click on the source and go into filters, but you'll notice that if you add a move source filter here, it will say it only works with scenes. So you need to add the filter to the scene and not to the source. I'll remove all these filters so we can start from scratch. So so let's say we want to do a really basic animation that simply snaps our webcam right back into the center of the screen. So all we need to do is right click on the scene, go into filters, click the plus and add a new move source filter. And then underneath source, select our webcam. And now you'll notice wherever we move our webcam, if we just turn that filter back on, it snaps the webcam right into that position. And we can add as many of these move source filters as we want. So let's say we wanna set up a second position where our camera is right back here during like gameplay or whatever. We just move our camera there, add another move source, select our webcam again. And now if we toggle between these two sources or these two move sources, it snaps the camera back and forth between those two positions. This could be really practical because say you're playing like a game or something and you wanna zoom in temporarily on your camera to show someone your Yu-Gi-Oh card collection. You can just click on this filter here and it will focus in on your camera and then you can click in the second filter to zoom back out. By the way, if you wanna update the position of one of those move source filters, what you can do is just move your camera into a new position. You can even rotate it and crop it in with the Alt key. And then once you have it in the position that you like, just click on get transform and it will update that move source filter to that new position. So now if we switch between these two different positions, you can see it has that new position that we just made. Now you probably don't wanna to have to keep going back into the filters menu and manually clicking on these move value filters because that's really inconvenient. So you could go into your OBS settings and go into hotkeys. There should be two extra options for setting hotkeys for each of these move source filters. 
Or if you have a stream deck, you can just set up buttons on your stream deck to turn these filters on. And so that way you have a really convenient way to snap your camera into different positions on the screen right at your fingertips. And because it's a stream deck, you can add as many of these buttons as you want. Now, I think these movements are a little too fast for my liking. The good thing is you can set custom durations for each movement. So I like to set them to around one second. And now the animations are a lot slower and more controlled, which I think looks a lot better. You can also turn off the custom duration. So when you turn the setting off, it will use whatever duration you've set in your scene transitions dock. So whatever number you have here, it's gonna use that number instead. And you could also set the duration to zero if you wanna do these kind of instant movements where it just snaps with no animation in between. So now that you know how these move source filters work, if you wanna make your own animations, all you have to do is create a metric ass ton of these move source filters and then chain them all together so that it looks like a smooth animation. The good thing is the move plugin makes it really easy to chain different move source filters together to create an animation, which I know sounds really confusing. So just let me show you what I mean. So I've added a few different move source filters to move our camera into different corners of the screen. And if I wanted to create an animation that does that automatically, so I don't have to manually click one at a time, what you can do is you can link step two into step three and then into step four and into step five. So it does it all in one movement. So if I click on step two and scroll all the way to the bottom, you can set your next move here to be another move source filter. So if I set the next move to be in step three, You'll notice that when I when I turn on step two, it will automatically go to step three without me having to click on it. So you can see where this goes, right? So if I wanna go from step three to step four, then I go to step three now, and I set the next move for that to step four, and then go to step four, set the next move for that to step five. So now if I wanna do our complete animation, instead of having to click each of these filters on and off one at a time, I just have to turn on step two once and it does our complete animation. Do it again. Really simple. You can also set it to reverse a movement. So let's say that first example that moved our camera to the center of the screen. What we can do is we can set the next move for that one to be reverse. And so now whenever we turn that first filter on, it's gonna move to the center and then move back to where the camera was originally. You can even set up two different move source filters to trigger at the exact same time. This is really useful if you wanna have two different objects moving at the same time. So let me show you an example of that. So I have one filter here that has this picture of a uh, Luigi running across the bottom of the screen. And then I have another filter here that has my camera sliding along the bottom of the screen. And I wanna create an animation where my face is like chasing after Luigi. And what I can do is I can have each of these two steps linked together. So if I click on that Luigi step here and scroll all the way to the bottom, I can make it so that whenever I trigger this move source filter, we can set the simultaneous move so that it also triggers that face movement filter. So now, Anytime I turn on that Luigi filter, they both move at the exact same time. Now this is not exactly what I want because I want my face to be trailing behind Luigi. So what I can do is I could go into that face filter here and then we can add a little bit of a start delay. So I'll add a delay of like maybe like half a second here. And so now whenever I trigger the Luigi filter, it's gonna wait half a second before it triggers that second filter here. So if I, if I run it again, now my face is slightly behind Luigi. Now, one extra thing I can change about the movement as well is you can see how it starts off slow and then speeds up in the middle. I don't really like that. So what we can do here is we can go for to each of these move source filters and change the easing here, and I, we can remove the easing. So it's just a straight linear movement. And we'll do the same thing with that face filter here. And now if we run the animation again, it's just a straight movement. So yeah, these have all been really stupid examples. I don't really know if any of this has made sense to you guys. Are you guys, are you awake still there? Pay attention to me, okay? Did, did anything I said make any sense so far? Just as a thank you for sitting through this ultra shit video, I wanna walk you through some of the real examples that I actually use in my stream. So this is the animation that plays every time I ban someone on my stream. This is Sparta! 
and you can see it actually working in real time. So as we play the animation, you can see each of the filters turning themselves on and off. And this is all automated within OBS. And you can see, even though this is a really simple animation, I had to add nine different move source filters just to track the face of the dude as he gets kicked into the hole. I've never watched this movie before, so I, I don't know what the scene is. And each of these move source filters is simply moving that profile picture into specific positions on the screen with really specific timings. So it really just comes down to making sure you get each of these timings and durations perfect to create the perfect animation. Takes a lot of time, a lot of effort, but it's super worth it at the end of the day. Now, for those of you that stuck around to the very end, I wanna show you some ultra specific features that could really help you out if you're trying to do these advanced animations. So you can see at the very start, I added this start trigger. This is just a normal move source value filter that's moving our video file. So this is the this is Sparta video file, but it's not actually moving it at all. If you look at the transform here, I've actually turned the transform off. It's this filter actually does absolutely nothing. All it does is it serves as a trigger point to actually start our whole animation. So at the bottom, I've set the next move to actually move the profile picture. But the important thing is this start trigger here. So I changed the start trigger from none to media started. And so what this does is as soon as we start playing the media file inside of OBS, it kicks off the whole animation. So everything is fully automated. So if I play the video in OBS, the whole thing starts. Now there are other steps involved like how do you automatically grab your viewer's profile pictures and put that in OBS? Or how do you make this animation automatically play whenever you ban people? But that's more of a streamer bot question and I want the series to be primarily focused on using the move plugin, but at least you guys know how to move sources around and create your own animations. Guys, I don't know what I'm gonna call this video. Can, can you just tell your friends about me? Tell your parents, tell your coworkers, tell your parole officer, I don't care who it is. Anyway, come back for part three where I'll show you guys how to animate any filter you want inside of OBS. See you guys in five minutes because I'm literally going to go and record that video right now.